Hello, my name is Mina Basalius. I'm a support engineer here at Hawkridge Systems, and today I'll be walking you through manually removing and reinstalling Microsoft.NET Framework. Let's begin. So the first thing you may ask is, what is .NET Framework? Well, a framework is a series of code made by Microsoft that they give out to developers in order to support them in making Windows applications. For example, if I open up SolidWorks and I click on the File Open dialog box, it takes me to the window that you see on the right here, and it looks strikingly familiar to Windows Explorer. Well, the developers at SolidWorks did not meticulously recreate this, uh, this interface. What they did was they leveraged .NET Framework to create a save and open operation. It's very common to see .NET issues in a Windows environment, which is why Microsoft has released this .NET repair tool photographed here. If you're interested in it, there'll be a link to it in the description below. But today, we're going to be using the manual repair method. So first thing is how do I know I have a .NET problem? Well, one indicator could be error messages. Another one is a lack of functionality in search. Either it doesn't work or it crashes all the time. Another way of figuring out if you have .NET problems or not is by opening up the event viewer and interrogating some of the events that you see in there. So let's do that. What you're going to do is you're going to click on the Windows Start button and type Event View. And that'll take you to this, the Event Viewer. Then you're going to want to click on Windows Logs, Application. Here you're going to see a large list of everything happening in the background on your system. Not all of them are interesting. So what you can do is you can create a filter and you can do that by clicking on this create custom view. The things that we're going to be interested in are warnings, critical issues and errors. You can also filter on things like .NET but we're not going to get that far yet. Then we'll click OK. You can save this filter as a new name. I'll just call it anything new view. I'll click OK. It says I already have one named New View. Do I want to overwrite it? Yes. Now I see all of the errors that I'm having on my system. I see a lot here with Bonjour. Which, so in the future, that may be something I'd want to take a look at. I see a bunch of application errors. Excel, Excel again. I see things hanging. In this case, it was SolidWorks. Again, issues with Excel. And here I see my first .NET runtime problem. And I see another one down here. I see a bunch more over here and issues with search and more issues with .NET. So what I could do is I could either try to pinpoint the specific cause of each one of these problems, or I can just go ahead, remove .NET fully, and then restart from scratch. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to close out the event viewer. I'm going to click on the Windows Start button again, and I'm going to type Add Remove. And then I'll select Add or Remove Programs. I'm going to scroll down to Microsoft. And I'll see that I have here installed Microsoft.NET Framework 4.5. You may see something else on your system. For example, you may see 3.5 or 4.0 or 3.0, or you can see multiple. If you do see multiple, uninstall them from the latest to the oldest. So since I only have one, I'll be uninstalling this. So I'll select Microsoft. .NET Framework 4.5 and click Uninstall. I'm going to select Remove .NET Framework and click Next. OK. 
continue. All right, now we're done. So I'm going to click on finished. But what we need to do now is clean up the residual files. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on turn Windows features on or off. Uncheck Microsoft.NET Framework 3.5. And I'll click OK. Now that the service has been turned off, I can go ahead and clean up the files. And I'm going to do that using the Microsoft.NET Cleanup tool. This tool is also attached in the description below. So I'm going to double click the Cleanup Tool Executable, click Run, Yes, Yes, and from the drop down menu, I'll make sure that all versions of .NET Framework are selected. Keep in mind this tool is specific to Windows 7. And I'll click Clean Up now. All right, now that it says that product cleanup has succeeded, we can just click Exit. And now we're going to restart our system. Keep note of where you are in the video because you're going to need to come back here once you're done. So click Start, and then Restart. And I'll see you again in a little bit. All right, and we're back. So next thing we're going to want to do is restart that service that we turned off earlier. So we're going to click on the Windows Start button. And once again, we're going to type Add Remove. Click on the Add or Remove Programs tool. Click on Turn Windows Features On or Off. We're going to turn on the Microsoft.NET Framework. And we're going to click OK. All right, now that the service has been restarted, we can reinstall .NET. Now there are three methods for doing this, which I'm not going to go through in this video. If you're interested in seeing all three methods, you can go to our support site. This link will be available in the description, and you will see our Repairing Microsoft.NET Framework Guide. It will be a PDF guide, and it will walk you through all three steps. The method that we're going to be doing in this video is through Repairing SolidWorks. So I'm going to scroll down, and you'll note that I have multiple versions of SolidWorks installed. If you have the same thing, then you'll want to right-click the latest version, in my case that's 2015, and you'll select Change, and then Modify, Next. Click Next on the serial number selection. Next you'll be taken to the product selection page. You can either check or uncheck features that you want to install or uninstall. You'll notice that at the bottom here, there are required components, Microsoft C++ and .NET Framework 4.5. I'm going to click Next on this, and then Modify Now. And you'll note that the installer is now going to install Microsoft.NET one more time. All right, now that this is complete, all you have to do is restart your system and you should be all set.